Part 2. Hello and welcome. In this video, we will discuss the way forward with focus on exploring the refrigerant groups and applications. This video has been prepared by Torben Funder Christensen, Danfoss Head of Corporate and Industrial Affairs at the Danfoss Cooling Segment. This visual represents our best guess on what is going to happen in the near future with refrigerants in the air conditioning and heat pump sector. Window units, split systems, and VRF systems will gradually shift away from using R410A and toward propane and R32, especially for the smallest charge. A2L refrigerants are expected to be used for higher capacities but still need some safety endorsement from building codes. Meanwhile, various standards like ASH RAE15 are still investigating A2L refrigerants. For bigger systems such as scroll chillers and rooftop units, a similar transformation to A2L refrigerants like R32 is happening. The efficiency and capacity of equipment using new refrigerants like R452B or R454B is also good and equivalent or even better than when using R410A. The end game also includes some applications using propane, especially in Europe. If we look at the high capacity area, which includes centrifugal and screw chillers, then we see that the most used refrigerant today is R134A. This refrigerant will also go through a transition to HFOs and blends. Danvos TurboCore compressor is a good example of this transition, since it uses 1234ZE, which has a GWP below 5. Nothing should hinder this technology from being used at the endgame, and we think HFOs would be a good endgame solution in this area. Previously, commercial refrigeration primarily used R404A and R134A, but today R404A is on the decline. R404A has a high global warming potential and the emissions from many commercial systems can be reduced considerably by substituting R404A with an alternative. As I mentioned earlier, in 2018, Europe experienced a dramatic phase-down. The majority of this phase-down step came from refrigeration on the supermarket side due to shifts away from R404A and towards CO2. CO2 technology has progressed a lot with the success of ejector technology. Even in the Middle East, supermarkets have demonstrated using CO2 to improve efficiency. In the future, we'll also see a partial transformation to cascade systems, where you have a chiller-like solution that uses R134A, R513A, or even R1234ZE combined with CO2 and indirect systems. When it comes to condensing units, we see a changeover to R448A, R449A, which are based on the HFO 1234YF, as well as R452A, R407A, and R407F. These refrigerants are reducing the GWP impact by about 50%, our portfolio is now qualified for these refrigerants, and we expect to continue the journey to even smaller GWP values. To do so, we need to design systems for A2L refrigerants like R454C and R455A. In the industrial refrigeration sector, ammonia has been a dominant player for many years. The service professionals specialized in ammonia applications are well-educated, and ammonia, despite being toxic, is extremely energy efficient and a globally accepted refrigerant for larger applications. Ammonia will remain in use in the short term. However, we also believe that the combination of ammonia and CO2 presents many opportunities for the future and is the likely endgame solution for industrial refrigeration. By introducing CO2 as the energy carrier in indirect systems with ammonia, we reduce the ammonia charge and thereby increase the system safety level. Dedicated component development continues to make these solutions even more feasible. Here is a broader overview of the refrigerants. Some of these refrigerants are in the pipeline and others are already out in the market. However, information about new refrigerants is released on a regular basis, so it can be difficult to keep an up-to-date overview. For example, the biggest applications, such as chillers, use R123, but there is already a new, non-flammable substitution emerging on the market called 1233ZD. The red circle around 1233ZD means that it is new and on the market, and the color inside the circle means it is a non-flammable refrigerant. At the same time, you can also see that the GWP level of this refrigerant is very low, below 150, so it is a very environment-friendly refrigerant. If we look at the applications that currently use R134A refrigerant, we can see that there are many opportunities to substitute this refrigerant. 
R134A has a GWP value of 1500 today, and it is considered a base refrigerant. There are already opportunities in the market to substitute this refrigerant with non-flammable refrigerants such as R513A and R450A, which have a GWP around 630. If we are looking to substitute R404A and R22, then there are lots of opportunities. R404A has a high GWP level, shown here. R22 needs to be phased out in developing countries, and there is currently a lot of work being done to solve that problem. The question is whether R22 should be substituted with the HFCs being used in the developed world now, or whether A5 countries should go directly to the new refrigerants. This is a difficult question to answer, and also one of the main points in discussion in the Montreal Protocol. In fact, many developing countries have begun using the refrigerants which are used in the developed countries. R452A is targeting transport and low temperature refrigeration. R448A and R449A are based on HFOs and are used in low and medium temperature refrigeration. They have an even lower GWP. This also means that R407A, R407F will probably be temporary solutions because of their higher GWP level, especially in countries with substantial taxes on high GWP refrigerants. Many other refrigerants are still not on the market, but they are being investigated and can potentially be in play, especially because of low GWP values. Good examples are R454C and R455A blends. Both are A2L refrigerants that need to be carefully designed into the systems and carefully handled by installers. In high-pressure applications, we have the base refrigerant R410A, and it is the most dominant refrigerant in air conditioning. There was no A1 replacement for this refrigerant until recently, when R466A entered the refrigerant scene. R466A contains a new molecule, CF3I. This contains iodine, an unstable molecule which needs special precautions to be taken in systems that use it. Material compatibility is a factor which needs close attention. It will be interesting to follow the market introduction of this refrigerant. Aside from this new entrant, it seems likely that high-pressure systems will move to A2L refrigerants. In the developing countries, the focus is on moving away from R22 and toward 410A. In Europe, R410A has experienced huge price increases. Because of this, we can see an accelerated shift towards two A2L refrigerants, R452B and R454B. The USA is also looking into substitutions for R410A for the long term. Many building codes call for A1 refrigerants, so R466A is a potential candidate. But A2L refrigerants are also likely to become popular. The question is again how to help developing countries make a similar move. We have already seen how R32 is on the market for smaller appliances, especially in Japan and India. In Europe, we see R32 on the market for small air conditioning appliances. However, several blends containing HFOs are now competing with R32 and show good performance results. At Danfoss, we have qualified products for R452B and R454B, which are very viable refrigerants. However, R452B still has a relatively high GWP value of 680, while R454B, with its value of 460, seems better suited for the long run, and we think it has a bright future on the market because it can function as a near drop-in replacement for R410A. Outside this scheme, we have, technically speaking, two very different refrigerants here, CO2 and ammonia. And of course, these refrigerants will come into play when we talk about R404A substitution. CO2 and ammonia will be main players in refrigeration and substitute a lot of the R22 industrial systems, especially in developing countries. So this brings me to the end here. We hope that you now have more clarity on this refrigerant transition. While the situation is constantly evolving, our lab and technical teams are working to ensure that you receive strong support and regular updates on the different aspects of your transition to new refrigerants. Don't hesitate to contact Dan Foss for more information or visit our website at refrigerants.danfoss.com. There you can download our cool tools, such as the refrigerants white paper, our low GWP brochure, and our retrofit guide. For product selection, please use our web application, Cool Selector at coolselector.danfoss.com.